Hi bookish besties, my name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you are already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today it is time to do my September slash Slayer Fest TBR. <laughs> If you're not familiar, Slayer Fest is a month-long readathon that I created based on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and it is going to run from September 1st through September 30th. And so the TBR that I built today, for the most part, is going to have to work with Slayer Fest. Now, of course, I know the prompts, and nobody else knows the prompts. And so here is the goal of today. I am going to be playing my TBR game. I'm not going to be pulling from the Challenge Cup again. We're going to go ahead and hold off on that for another month, but I am going to be doing my gameplay. And the goal is for every prompt I land on for gameplay, I'm going to see if I can try to fit the books I select for those prompts into Slayer fest somehow. And so after we are done with gameplay, after I've selected all of the books for those prompts, I'm going to go ahead and run through all of the books that I have scheduled for the 10 main prompts of Slayer Fest. And so by doing so and potentially dropping a little bit of a hint here and there, you might be able to guess what the 10 prompts are because of course you are not going to know them ahead of time. They are being dropped throughout the month of September. So I'm hoping that by giving you a cheeky little sneak peek at some of the books that I plan on reading for the month of September, you might be able to guess them. It is absolutely not too late to join Slayer Fest if you want to. I will be sure to have the announcement video linked down below along with the discord and the sign up form. And aside from that, I really don't think that I have any other housekeeping. So we are going to go ahead and just jump right into the gameplay. All right, everybody, it is time for the next round of the My Bad TBR game. It's going to look a little bit different this time because as you can see, I only have two active pawns out on the board, one green, one yellow. And because of that, I'm not going to be drawing color tiles for the remainder of this round of gameplay, just because it's going to start getting to the point where each of the pawns are very, very limited in what they can do. So I'm just going to make my moves based on the prompts, where the pawns are at the time, and things like that. We're going to go ahead and start with the standard six draws, but that could change just depending on how kind the cards are to me and whether or not I can make the prompts I land on line up with the books that I have planned for Slayer Fest. So without further ado, let's go ahead and draw card number one. All right, so we're not off to the best start just because four is a backwards movement. So if I move this yellow guy four, it is one, two, three, four, yellow on the cover. And if I move this green guy four, it is one, two, three, four, four in country. So that basically means read a book set in a country that you do not live in. And that will actually work perfectly for me. So let me go ahead and flip the board and we'll move that green guy backwards four. All right, so we have one, two, three, four, foreign country. All right, so even though I had to move backwards that time, that prompt really worked well for me. So let's go ahead and see if the board continues to be kind. All right, my first draw was the number four, a backwards movement, and I chose to move the color green, and this landed me on the prompt of foreign country. And that essentially means that I need to read a book that is set in a country that I do not currently live or that I'm not from. And for this, I've actually chosen Someone in the Attic by Andrea Mara. This is a fairly new release. It is one that I hadn't heard of previously until now, when Book of the Month actually announced that it is an add-on for September, meaning come September 1st, you are going to be able to add it to your box to be shipped with the other September books that you add to. To it. And because this book satisfies a project that I'm currently working on throughout the year, I'm going to have to read it anyway. And so what better time to go ahead and read it than for Slayer Fest, especially since I'm going to be able to get it to satisfy not only this foreign country prompt, but a Slayer Fest prompt. This is not a debut from Andrea Mara from what I'm understanding, but I've actually never read any of her books before. But when I was kind of looking into her on Goodreads, her books seem to have pretty high reviews. So I'm a little bit intrigued. This says, you thought you were home alone. Anya is enjoying a relaxing bath when she hears a noise coming from the ceiling. Through the open bathroom door, she sees the attic hatch swing down and a masked figure drops to the floor. 30 seconds later, Anya is dead. You're not afraid of being alone in the dark. You're afraid you're not alone. Across town, Anya's old school friend Julia sees an online video of a masked figure climbing out of an attic. She suddenly realizes why the footage is eerily familiar. It was filmed inside her house in a luxury gated community designed to keep intruders out. And now your worst fears are coming true. Why would a stranger target Julia? Unless of course, it's not a stranger at all. That sounds incredibly ominous. I don't know about you, but I got a little bit of goosebumps reading that because I don't know if there's any one of us who has like an attic but hasn't wondered if there's somebody secretly living up there. Although I hope those attics are better insulated than ours because ours currently is a furnace. No living person would be able to live up in our attic at this time, but you know what I mean. So this is absolutely terrifying and I'm very much wanting to give Andrea Mara a chance because of the high reviews that I'm seeing on her books. So I feel like this is the perfect book to read for multiple reasons. It's going to satisfy a Slayer Fest prompt. It's going to satisfy the TBR game prompt and and it's going to satisfy a reading project that I'm doing. So we're really productive with this selection. 
All right, six is a very straightforward movement. So if I move this yellow guy forward six, it is one, two, three, four, five, six, random number generator, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, pet pick. So that means a pet would have to pick my read. And honestly, neither one of those are truly ideal, but I think I'm more willing to deal with a random number generator than a pet pick at this point. So we'll go ahead and do one, two, three, four, five, six, random number generator. All right, then I drew the number six. I chose to move the yellow pawn and that landed me on random number generator. And basically how I utilize this is I go to my want to read shelf on Goodreads and then I use a random number generator. And in this instance, I had about 122 books on my to read shelf. So I did the random number generator zero to 122. And the number it selected landed me on a book called These Tangled Vines by Julianne McLean. I can't remember where I first heard of Julianne McLean, but the synopses of her books really, really intrigued me, but I have yet to pick one up. I don't necessarily know if Slayer Fest is the right time to give her a shot, but we are going to because that's what the random number generator selected. And I'm actually really, really interested in the premise of this story. It says, if Fiona has learned anything in life, it's how to keep a secret, even from the father who raised her. She is the only person who knows about her late mother's affair in Tuscany 30 years earlier, and she intends to keep it that way until a lawyer calls with shocking news. Her biological father has died and left her an incredible inheritance, along with two half siblings. Fiona travels to Italy, where the family is shocked to learn of her existence and desperate to contest her share of the will. While the mystery of her mother's affair is slowly unraveled, Fiona must navigate through tricky family relationships and tense sibling rivalry. Fiona both fears and embraces her new destiny as she searches for the truth about the fateful summer her mother spent in Italy and the father she never knew. Spilling over with the sumptuous flavors and romance of Tuscany, these tangled vines takes readers on a breathtaking journey of love, secrets, sacrifice, courage, and most importantly, the true meaning of family. So right away, we have incredibly complicated family dynamics, right? This person's mother had an affair 30 years ago. It sounds like she got pregnant with our main character and she never knew her biological father, but it doesn't sound like the father who raised her knew, but now her father in Tuscany has died. He's left her an inheritance. She's heading on over there, but there's some tension, right? Because this family did not know of her existence and they're contesting her right to the inheritance. So it definitely sounds like it's going to be a little bit messy, but there's probably going to be also some harder hitting and touching elements to the story as well. And I hope that I really love this because like I said, a lot of her synopses have really intrigued me and I would like to have another go-to author to choose from. So this one is now going to satisfy the random number generator prompt for gameplay. All right, draw number three. Now eight gives me the option to either stick with a prompt that I land on or select a different prompt, but I don't actually have control over the prompt that I choose. I have all of the prompts in a cup that I will have to pull from. I will say that I haven't updated that cup since I've updated the board. So some of the prompts in there are going to be no longer relevant, but I think it's going to just depend on what I land on. If I move this guy eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that will actually get him in his safety zone. And if I get him there, I have to pull from my challenge cup and then one, two, three, four, five, six, Six, seven, eight, summer. So that essentially just means to read a book that is kind of giving a little bit of summer vibes. So even though I know that moving the green will get me into the safety zone, I think I'm going to go ahead and just stick with summer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I could always change this prompt. However, that's also a risk because it could be worse. So hopefully I will have made a decision on what I'm going to do by the time I'm updating you on the book that I've selected. All right, then I drew the number eight and I chose once again to move the color yellow and this landed me on on summer, which basically means that I need to read a book that's giving me summer vibes. I honestly thought about skipping this prompt just because there wasn't anything on my immediate TBR that I felt gave summer vibes, but I did manage to find a book that I own that will likely satisfy a Slayer Fest prompt, and it's kind of giving me summer vibes just because of the bright, fun colors on the cover, and that is Crazy Stupid Bromance, which is the third book in the Bromance Book Club series by Alyssa K. Adams. If you are not familiar, this is a contemporary romance series that follows a bunch of guys who have a book club where they exclusively read romance in order to better understand understand what their wives and girlfriends want so they can be better partners, better lovers. You're following each one of the guys of this book club as they are essentially gaining their perfect romance. Some of them are trying to fix broken relationships. Some are some of them are just now getting into new relationships. And so I have really enjoyed my reading experience with this series overall. I don't really want to say anything more about the synopsis of this book just because it is the third book in a the series. They are companions. You don't need to read one after the other, but I would prefer not to like give any spoilers to anybody or anything like that. This I feel is going to work for both Slayer Fest and my TBR game. All right, draw number four. Okay, we have a joker and that is a skip. I may actually utilize that this time around, but we're gonna see. All right, and then next I drew a jack and y'all know what that means, it is a skip. Meaning if any of these prompts were not going to work out for me, I am able to skip. And at this time, once again, I don't think I'm gonna be able to use it. Honestly, y'all, I think I might need to change like the meaning of the king and the jack because I have just been building them up throughout this round of gameplay for the past almost two years at this point. I've barely used any of them. And so I think I could possibly put them to better use. If you have some ideas on how I could better use the jack 
black or the king please comment down below or maybe i should limit myself to how many times i could utilize them for a skip or get out of jail free because i just don't think that i'm utilizing them as much for them to be very beneficial to my gameplay but yeah for now i don't think we're gonna use it draw number five All right, so that's a get out of start card or a move forward one. Obviously I don't have anything in start, so I just have to move one of the pawns forward one. If I move this guy here, that is once again, pet pick. And this one is dice roll. So we're gonna go ahead and just do that. All right, next I drew an ace. I chose to move the green pawn forward one and that landed me on a dice roll. And so basically what I did is I took a D20. I selected 20 random books from my want to read list on Goodreads. I associated a number to them. And then basically once I rolled the die, I read the book that was associated with this number. When I rolled the die, I got a number six. Six, at least I think it was the number six and not the number nine. And the book that I attached to this was Five Survive by Holly Jackson. This is one that I'm a little bit nervous about. Y'all know that I really, really liked the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. And for a young adult age range, I thought it was incredibly well done. I haven't heard the best things about Five Survive, but I've also heard a lot of amazing things about her newest release called The Reappearance of Rachel Price. And I really don't want to skip a book of hers. You know what I mean? Because I could actually love it just as much as the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. So I'm going into it a little bit nervously, but I do want to give it a shot. This says 18 year old Red and her friends are on a road trip in an RV heading to the beach for spring break. It's a long drive but spirits are high until the RV breaks down in the middle of nowhere. There's no mobile phone reception and nobody around to help and as the wheels are shot out one by one the friends realize that this is no accident. There's a sniper out there in the dark watching them and he knows exactly who they are. One of the group has a secret that the sniper is willing to kill for. A game of cat and mouse plays out as the group desperately tries to get help and to work out which member of the group is the target. Buried secrets are forced to light in the cramped claustrophobic setting of the RV and tensions with in the group will reach deadly levels. Not everyone will survive the night. Okay, that's interesting. I don't think I've ever actually fully read that synopsis all the way through. So you have five teenagers. They are trapped basically in an RV. They're heading to spring break and somebody's trying to take them out. So it doesn't even sound like a locked room mystery where one of them is the suspect and the others are dying. There's literally somebody out there, a sniper who is trying to kill them, which, you know, let's be honest, very intense for a young adult story. And one of them is certainly hiding secrets. None of the other ones know who the target is, but it sounds like all of those secrets are going to come to light. I'm here for it. That actually sounds really interesting to me so I am excited to get to this one. All right draw number six. All right, seven. Typically, I'm allowed to split movements between pawns of the same color, but since I don't have two pawns of the same color out on the board, I'm just going to move forward seven. So seven again, we get the green into the safety zone and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, book box. I think I'm gonna go ahead and be brave and do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I will pull from my challenge cup. All right, then I drew the number seven and I chose this time to go ahead and move the color green so that he could get into his safety zone. Now the safety zone squares do not contain prompts, because anytime I land on one, I have to pull from my challenge jar. So let me grab that really quick. All right, so here's my trusty challenge jar and he has been completely redone. So just as a reminder, this cup contains all of my physically owned TBR books. It contains all of the sequels to series that I'm in the middle of. It contains all of the recommendations that you've given me as part of the Read Like My Subscribers Challenge. And it also contains the remaining prompts I need to satisfy for the other reading challenges that I'm doing throughout the year. Although in all honesty, I think there's maybe only like two or three of those left, but that's what this little guy is. So we're just gonna go ahead and pull one and I really hope it's kind to me. I will say that my only caveat here is that if it's a thick chunky fantasy I'm going to put it back because I'm already physically reading one at the moment and I don't know if I'm gonna have the bandwidth to start another one. So okay all right I'm really nervous because this is the one book that's completely out of my control and I will have no idea if I can fit it into Slayer Fest or not. Okay all right we got one. True North. Okay, this is the True North series by Serena Bowen. I think I need to read book number six or book number seven. Let me get that pulled up really quick. Okay, yes, I need to read book seven in that series, which is called Heartland. I honestly don't know anything about which characters this is following, but it sounds like it's going to be a popular guy tutoring a girl and they're going to have like a backwards Nathan and Haley relationship. So I'm here for it. I love the Nathan and Haley dynamic from One Tree Hill. And then of course you also have that in The Deal by L. Kennedy, which I also really enjoyed that book. So I'm really Really interested to see Serena Bowen's take on it. This is another romance series that I've really enjoyed my time with overall. It's not 100% perfect to me, but for the most part, I've really enjoyed the relationships in here. And I only have two books left in the series, kind of like with the Bromance Book Club. It sounds like September might be a little bit of a romance heavy month. So we're going to see how that goes. All right, that was six. And I think the board was pretty kind, even though I definitely do have to select a book for almost every single draw. That's not too bad. And I think for the most part, I can make them work with my Slayer Fest TBR. So I'm going to go ahead and pull one more card and see what I get.
we have another eight. I can't move the green one because there's not eight spaces left. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Continuous series, that is perfect. I can 100% do that one. All right, now I'm tempted to keep going, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to just play it safe and stop it here. So these will be my draws for the month of September. All right, and the very final draw was another number eight. I once again chose to move the yellow pawn and this landed me on the prompt to continue a series. I do have yet another romance book that I'm going to use to satisfy this. It is one that I have been putting off for a very, very, very long time. It is the third full length novel, but technically fourth book in the Simple Wild series by K.E. Tucker. Y'all know how I feel about that series. The Simple Wild is one of my favorite romance novels of all time. And I actually liked the second book just as much for different reasons, because that book really follows the main characters after the honeymoon phase is over, right? When they're really getting into the relationship. And I thought it was just so beautiful. I love the characters so much and the world. Now, this third book does not follow the same two main characters. It follows a side character that you see throughout the series and she gets her own romance. I've heard a lot of people say that they actually love it more than the other two. I don't expect to love this as much as the other two but I think I've been a little bit hesitant going in because first of all we're not following the same main characters and also it's kind of one of those things where you wonder if the books just found you in the right place at the right time at the right moment of your life and when you go back to the series it's not going to hit as hard you know what I mean? I'm afraid I'm really not going to like it nearly as much so I've been procrastinating on it so much but if I I didn't already say the name. It's called Running Wild and I'm going to do it. I'm going to be brave and I'm going to do it y'all. And I really just hope that I love it as much as I think I'm going to. All right. So those are all the books that I'm selecting for this round of gameplay. Now I'm going to quickly run through my Slayer Fest TBR. A lot of these are going to be incorporated in the Slayer Fest TBR. The book that I plan to read for prompt number one, this is a tentative book because I have some holds that I'm expecting to come in from the library that will also satisfy the first prompt for Slayer Fest. But just in case they do not come in in time, because at this point we're only a week out from the start of the readathon, I do plan on reading Who is Ma Dixon by Alexandra Andrews. The reason I selected this is first of all, it's something that I own. It's been on my TBR for quite a while and it's literally the only book on my physical TBR I own that satisfied this first prompt. I have never actually read anything from Alexandra Andrews before. This could have been her debut. I'm not entirely sure, but I've heard a lot of really good things about this story and it intrigued me. So I wanted to go ahead and pick it up. This says Florence Darrow is a low level publishing employee who believes that she's destined to be a famous writer. When she stumbles into a job as the assistant to the brilliant enigmatic novelist known as Ma Dixon, Dixon, whose true identity is a secret, it appears that the universe is finally providing Florence's big chance. The arrangement seems perfect. Maude Dixon can be prickly, but she is full of pointed wisdom, not only on how to write, but also on how to live. Florence quickly falls under Helen's spell and eagerly accompanies her to Morocco, where Helen's new novel is set. Amid the colorful streets of Marrakesh and the windswept beaches of the coast, Florence's life at last feels interesting enough to inspire a novel of her own. But when Florence wakes up in the hospital after a terrible car accident with no memory of the previous night and no sign of Helen, she's tempted to take a short Cut. Instead of hiding in Helen's shadow, why not upgrade into Helen's life? Not to mention her best-selling pseudonym. Taut, twisty, ambitiously entertaining, Who is Maude Dixon is a stylish psychological thriller about how far into the darkness you're willing to go to claim the life you always wanted. So this is definitely about someone who wants to be a famous author and she basically decides to steal the pseudonym of an already famous author. And I'm intrigued. It definitely sounds like a twisty time and I'm definitely intrigued to read this one. Crazy Stupid Bromance is actually going to satisfy prompt number two for Slayer Fest. Like I said, I really don't want to say anything more about the plot of this just because all of the characters are interconnected. But what I really am looking forward to about this one is that it's set at a cat cafe. And if that didn't scream Brittany, I don't know what does. So I'm really looking forward to that aspect of this story. And so this will absolutely satisfy prompt number two for Slayer Fest. For prompt number three of Slayer Fest, I'm actually going to use that Someone in the Attic Thriller by Andrea Mara. That's the book that I chose to satisfy the foreign country prompt for the TBR gameplay. And it's also going to work very, very well for the prompt for number three. I'm not going to say anything more about it because I did read the synopsis earlier, but I'm really excited for that one. For prompt number four of Slayer Fest, I am super excited because I'm finally going to be reading Apprentice to the Villain by Hannah Nicole Mayer. I was hoping to get to it in August, but when I realized that it would be perfect to satisfy a Slayer Fest prompt, I begrudgingly decided to hold off until September. Not to mention that August has been absolutely crazy. It's been one of the busiest months that I've had in a really long time, and I don't want anything to get in the way of my enjoyment of this story. So I'm definitely looking forward to getting to this one. Y'all know how I felt about Apprentice to the Villain. It was a cozy, soft fantasy romance that was just just absolutely joyful. I just feel like everybody needs to read it and I'm super hyped to be getting to this one. For prompt number five of Slayer Fest, I'm actually going to be reading The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. I've been thinking about this a lot recently because he has a new release coming out that's not in this series, but I know that The Thursday Murder Club is deeply beloved by a lot of people and I was initially put off by it, not necessarily because of the hype surrounding it, but just because I was worried it was going to be a little bit too much of a cozy kind of mystery series and those aren't really my vibe, but I've heard that they can be really hard 
hitting and emotionally devastating and y'all know that I'm here for it. I don't want to write it off without giving it a try and so because it will actually work for a Slayer Fest prompt I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to go ahead and give it a try and for those who are not familiar I believe the Thursday Murder Club features some senior citizens in a retirement home that solve murders and I'm here for it. I'm really looking forward to that one. For prompt number six I'm actually going to fit in Five Survives by Holly Jackson. Now I will admit to myself that I'm pushing this. Five Survives doesn't necessarily fit exactly this prompt for Slayer Fest but I'm going to make it work. I think I mentioned when I was talking about it earlier that Five Survive is a young adult novel and that's another reason why I've been kind of nervous to pick it up because even though I did like A Good Girl's Guide to Murder I have just almost completely moved away from young adult but I really do think that Holly Jackson has the opportunity to write a book that is geared towards a younger audience but do so in a way that has impact and has the substance that you're kind of looking for so I'm definitely going to try to fit it in for Slayer Fest. For prompt number seven I'm actually going to be reading These Tangled Vines by Julianne McLean. This satisfies this prompt perfectly. I'm not going to say anything more about it but maybe if you have read this book or you look into this book you'll be able to figure out what the prompt is. For prompt number eight of Slayer Fest I actually had this book selected first and it just happened to fit in to the TBR gameplay but I'm gonna go ahead and read Running Wild. It's actually kind of killing me in my soul that I'm going to have to wait till near the end of the month to read this because I kind of want to rip the band-aid off y'all. I want to read it. I want to get it over with. I have a feeling that these reads are going to be very very stressful for me for the month but it's okay. It's fine. We're all fine but yes like I said this is one that I've been avoiding but I have a feeling that I'm going to love it so I wanted to fit it in for Slayer Fest. It definitely works for prompt number eight and so we're gonna do it. And for prompt number nine of Slayer Fest I'm going to try to read Throne to the Fallen by Carrie Maniscalco. So shortly after filming this video I realized that I had just recently received the newest fairy loot adult book only box that contained Long Live Evil by Sarah Reese Brennan and I had heard a lot of really great things about this primarily from Jay Kristoff and so that was really high praise and it really intrigued me and so I decided that I wanted to go ahead and read that instead of Throne of the Fallen to satisfy prompt number nine. And honestly y'all that is it. I can't exactly pick something for prompt number 10 of Slayer Fest because that is kind of an in the moment type of selection and you'll understand what I mean when I actually drop the prompt. So we definitely have nine books on the TBR for Slayer Fest and for the most part all of the books I selected for the TBR gameplay are going to be able to fit into the Slayer Fest TBR with the exception of the True North book. If you are participating in Slayer Fest please comment down below and see if you can guess any of the main prompts from the books that I selected or from some of the hints that I might have subtly dropped in there or maybe not so subtly. I don't know if I'm any good at this. Who knows? If you are not participating in Slayer Fest please comment and let me know if you have read any of the books on my TBR what your thoughts are. I would love to know or if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty go ahead and leave me a dice emoji in honor of the dice roll that I had to do for my TBR game and as always if you like this video or if you just like me please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I typically post two videos a week one on Wednesdays one on Sundays and I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms which you can always find linked down below along with any books featured in the video. Until next time y'all bye.